Hello, welcome to another video on Inkscape. In this video I'm going to be showing you how you can create this heart design. Stick with us. So to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is import the heart. So we've come up to File, down to Import, and in here I've got my heart design. So we'll click on that, press Open, all the images I'm using I've downloaded from Pixabay. If you look in the description below, you've got links to all of them. So for the settings, I'm just going to click OK. And that's imported the image into Inkscape for us. If we grab our nodes tool and just try selecting this, we get no nodes appear, which kind of indicates that it's a bitmap rather than a vector graphic. So we're going to have to convert this into a vector graphic for what we're going to do. So to do that, we're going to use something called uh, Trace Bitmap. So come up, grab my selection tool again. We're going to come up to Path, down to Trace Bitmap, and that'll open up the Trace Bitmap dialog box on the right-hand side. Now, we've got this design selected. We're going to be using Single Scan for this project. Uh, what Single Scan does is just creates a single path from our image. Um, this looks quite good. The dark area is the area that's represented by our path and I'm quite happy with that so I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna click on apply and that will create a vector copy of our image we can drag drag our copy over to the side click on the original image and we can just press delete get rid of that so I'm just gonna zoom out a bit our image is a little bit big so we're gonna shrink that down so if we hold on to control that will constrain the proportions so it does, we don't misshape it when we shrink it down. And we can plonk it down there somewhere. Perhaps do it a little bit more. So that's our heart and birds. The next thing I want to bring in is an image of a girl's face. So I'm going to come up to File, come down to Import, and we're going to use this, this photo of a girl here. Again, we can click OK to all the settings, and that brings the image into Inkscape for us again. So I chose this image because there's quite a lot of contrast. We've got these pale areas of the face, hair and hand, and then we've got the darker background. So for this one we're going to be using single scan again. We're going to use brightness cutoff. What happens is anything that's darker than a certain threshold becomes part of the path. So we can adjust our threshold to determine how much of the image we want to be displayed in our path. So if we just set this adjust it till we're happy with it, that's probably a little bit too much about there. So one thing we can do is the preview image is quite small here at the moment. If we just hover over these three dots, we can just drag this bar over a little bit, allowing our preview window to get a bit bigger. So we've got some of these little highlights selected on our coat, and I'm quite happy with that. We'll try and remove these afterwards. So I'm happy with the way the image is at the moment. The only thing I do want to change is the dark area is the path. So at the moment we've got the area surrounding the face as our path. I want the face to be the path. So I'm going to come up to the top here and we've got this invert image. If we just tick this box, what happens is it reverses it. So now our path is the face and the hair, which is exactly what we want. So we can press apply. And that's created our copy for us. I'm going to click on the photo at the back and press delete. Now I'm just going to change that. So if we select it, I'm just going to change that to a lighter colour. Perhaps go for a light pink so we can see it, but we can still see it over the white background. So I want to shrink this down now so it sits nicely on our hearts behind. So I'm going to hold down Control to constrain the proportions, and then I'm just going to drag up on this arrow, and then we can move it into place. I think that looks quite good. So we zoom in a bit. I think what I'll do is cut this out of the heart first and then, and then we'll get rid of these, these blobs over on the side here. So I'm going to hold down shift, I'm going to select the heart behind, I'm going to come up to path and down to difference. When we use this we need to make sure the image we want to cut out is on top of the um, image we're cutting it from. So there we've got the girl's face now as a hole in our heart so if we, if we move it over we can see it's cut out. So we'll move that back. So I'm just going to remove some of these, these bits over here. So what I'm going to do is grab my Bezier tool and we can just literally just draw around these. Oh, come down there somewhere. 
So now we've got this patch that covers the holes, all I'm going to do is hold down shift, let's grab the selection tool, and I hold down shift, select the heart, and then I'm going to come up to path, union, to union them together. And that has the effect of removing the bits from our image. So now we've got the image looking how we want. Um, I just want to fill this in. I think to fill it in, I'm going to use a photo of a sunset and I'm going to use this as a clipping path. So first thing we're going to do is import our image. So we're going to come up to file, down to import. And I've got a sunset there that I'm going to use. So I'll open that. We can OK to all the settings. And that pops our picture in for us. We can get rid of our trace bitmap. We don't want that anymore. We'll just zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to just drop that down to the bottom so it's behind our, our heart shape. I'm going to come up to the top and I'm just going to open up our fill and stroke dialog box which is this, this little icon with the paintbrush. If you don't have your um, command bar at the top like this and you'd like it this way, you can come up to view and down to the bottom we've got a widescreen. Just uncheck that and you'll get your command bar at the top like I've got mine. So we'll open the fill and straight dialog box. And in here I'm going to click on our heart design. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity so we can see what's behind it. So now we're going to move it down. I think perhaps there might look quite good. So with our heart selected, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to come up to Set Clip Group. Now that's converted it to a clipping group. So if we come up to the top, we want to open up our Layers and Objects dialog box, which is this one here. So in here we've, we've got our clipping group. So we could name that Clip Group. In the clip, um, in the clip group inside, we've got our original path, which is the original black path that we've used to create our clipping group. We don't actually need to do anything with that at the moment, but what we do need to do is take our image of the sunset and we need to drop that into our clipping group. So it pops it inside like that. So what we can do, we can actually move our sunset around until we get it in a place that we're happy with. So round about there. So I'll go with that. So I'm going to click off. I'm going to select the layer at the top and I'm going to drag this over now so we can move our design back onto our piece of paper. I'm going to zoom in so we get a better view of the face. Now I'm quite happy with the design but I want the eyes to stand out. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to come up, I'm going to grab our ellipse tool and I'm just going to drag out an ellipse over the eyes like so. I'm going to turn it black down the bottom here <clears throat> and we need to increase the opacity so at the moment it's down at 30, we want that up to 100. If we come over to our layers and objects dialog box we've now got our path sitting outside the clip group so we just need to take this and drop it on top of our clip group to drop it inside. We can adjust the shape of our ellipse, make it a little bit taller to get the nose. So we grab our selection tool, select our path. I just want to move it down a little bit so it gets the face. So now it's sat behind the face. We've got this, this nice bright dark eyes, but we do have this very obvious um, ellipse sat behind our face. So the way I'm going to rectify that is I'm just going to blur it. So if we come into the fill and straight dialog box, we can come down to the bottom and with our ellipse selected, we can just come to the blur and we can increase the blur and blur that out. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate that circle and I'm going to reduce the blur so it just brings it in a bit and brings those eyes out a little bit more. And I think that looks quite effective. So if we zoom out a little bit, um, just move it over to the centre. So I think our eyes are looking quite nice now. I might darken up some of the birds. So if we just press Ctrl D again to duplicate our ellipse, we can drag this one up and we can use this one just to darken our birds at the top here. So we can stretch it down. 
So I'm quite happy with our design now. We just put a background on it. So I'm just going to drag out a rectangle behind it. So we need to come up to our layers and objects dialog box. We need to make sure we're back into layer one out of the clipping group. We can then grab our rectangle tool. We can drag a rectangle over the whole lot, somewhere around there. We give it a nice light color. So we go for a pale fawny color like so, perhaps a bit lighter. And we need to drop that down behind our design. So if we grab our selection tool, we can come up to the top and just drop it down till it sits behind the design. We can then just move it down till it's where we want it. So once I've got the rectangle where I want it, I'm going to come up to edit down to resize page to selection and that trims us down. I'm just going to stick a radial gradient on this now. So with it selected, we can come back into our fill and stroke dialog box. We can come down, select the radial gradient button. Come down to our gradient tool on the left hand side and we get these bars. We want the center one. We have that very light and we drag it down so it sits in the center of the face. And then the outside stops. If we click on one of those, we can change these and darken it up. At the moment, the alpha channel is set to fully translucent. So we grab hold of our alpha channel and just move that up to make it fully opaque. So actually, I'm going to center this on the page rather than her face. And we can just drag these out to better fit our image. Darken that center very slightly. Actually, we need it round to a orangey color and then we just bring it up very slightly so I think that's looking quite effective what I might do is just quickly add a border around the outside so to do this I'm going to come up to our selection tool I'm going to select our background I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it I'm going to come down to the bottom I'm going to remove the fill by clicking on the X and then I'm going to give it a stroke so I'm going to come down to the bottom, holding down shift so we affect our stroke and not the fill colour. We can give it a stroke. We've got a very fine stroke at the moment, so if we right click on our stroke width down here, we can just come up and enlarge that and let's try six. That looks reasonable. So now we just need to inset this border. So I'm going to hold down on the control key and I'm just going to press on number nine, which is the open bracket. And we just do it till we've inset it as much as we want. And I think that'll do us. If we click on five on the keyboard, it'll bring it up to full size. So that's our finished design. I've tweaked it very slightly off screen. I've added an extra V shape down the bottom here, blurred it and just dropped it into the clipping group, same as we did with the ellipses for the eyes. Um, I've also moved the design up slightly and dropped it on top of the background border. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next video.